Hello and welcome to another episode of Friday Fly Day. It's a series by Crazy About Fly Fishing and today we're going to be tying a heron copper fly. It's a well-known New Zealand pattern and a must-have if you're visiting. So let's go. Okay, we'll be tying this fly on size 10 barbed hooks Kumo from Fly Tires Dungeon. You can get these from I Love Fly Fishing. We'll be using 3.5 mm gold slotted tungsten beads. For dubbing, we'll actually be using squirrel dubbing. Uh, it kind of works a little bit better than hairs dubbing because the hairs dubbing you buy in the shop here tends to be a bit too fluffy. This is a bit more spiky and quite the right color, so it works quite nicely. We'll be putting on a few wraps of lead wire. We're using medium copper wire for the rib. And to put it all together, we'll be using 8O black uni thread. Put the bead onto the hook and put the hook in the vise. Just lay a bit of a base of thread. I always put some thread inside the uh, slotted bead and twist it around like that till it sticks. This is something I do. And then I'm gonna lay a base of thread right to the bend of the hook. Right there. Now this is my heavy fly generally in a two nymph rig. You can do it without this, but I will put three or four wraps of lead as well. And the other thing that this does is it helps build up the shape of the fly. Finish that off. Okay. Put the bead tightly into that. Now I'm just going to wrap back and tighten that lead so it doesn't come loose. Now you can nicely see we've already got a bit of a shape of the fly there. The next thing I'm going to do is tie in my copper wire for the rib. So I'll do this towards the end of the lead. And now for the tail, I actually use pheasant tail fibers. Um, you can use brown hackle as well, whatever you choose for a tail. I find pheasant tail fibers work quite well for me. Measure them against the hook shank, probably about half. Pinch them, unwrap up, loosely up and down. Trap them in there. Okay. And I like to do a wrap behind the tail as well. Perky, and then I wrap that forward and chop it off. Now that's the main part of your shape. You've got the shape of your fly already there. So that you want. Now wind your thread back to the right to the back. Now a handy tip here before you start the dubbing, this squirrel dubbing is spiky and you want to keep the spiky bits you don't want to really wrap it right around the thread so what I do is I use some wax um, dubbing wax and I wax the thread with that just a little bit before I put the dubbing on um, and that helps the loose fibers stick to the uh, to the thread while without having to wrap it right around. So I pinch little bits off and then I just try to loosely dub it onto this wax thread. I don't want it too tight, too much wound around because I want it to be, I want this fly to be very spiky. That's one of the keys to this fly. And then I start wrapping it around. Now you've already got the shape of the body so you just work your way up. Okay, add a bit more wax to finish that part off. If you get good at it, you can do it essentially in one, one wrap. I'm not that great at it yet. Wrap over that. Go to the head. Okay, now I do my rib. I try to get about four wraps up. Tie that in. 
solidly. Okay, and now you can just helicopter your copper wire off so it breaks nice and close in there. Okay, now to spike it up even more, I use an old toothbrush. You can use Velcro or anything to spike up and make your nice flow. And I'll spike it and I'll brush it a little bit back and up and get trapped fibers out. So it looks nice. There we go. Now, one more bit of dubbing. I'm going to create a little bit of a collar. Put a little bit more wax on there. And now I take a little bit more dubbing. And I'm just going to finish the fly off with a bit of a collar around the head of the fly. Okay. Put a little bit more on there. Now what I do is I wind this, I'll have a couple of winds, fold it back, fold it back, fold it back, and just as I wind I just fold the uh, material back. Okay. And now just a hand whip finish and you can put some super glue on there on the thread if you want, make it a bit stronger. I always recommend doing that. It really helps make the fly a bit stronger. Okay, now this is a great pattern for New Zealand, especially in a tuna and frigas, the heavy fly. I'll just brush that up again. There you go, that's the heron copper. It's basically an essential pattern for fly fishing in New Zealand. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed learning how to tie a heron copper fly. If you enjoy these videos, please press the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can see all the future videos in this series. And then also leave me a comment to let me know what flies you'd like to see me tie in future videos. See you in the next one.